Dealing with a red eye can sometimes be quite tricky. When we are making a differential diagnosis of a red eye presentation, it can range from the inf inflammatory or the infectious causes such as conjunctivitis, which is basically can be bacterial, viral, fungal. So one should know how to basically differentiate uh, these different sorts of or these different ranges of diseases which can range from the inflammatory, uh, from the infectious causes and it can go on to the traumatic causes it can move on to the uh, mechanical trauma uh, even uh, trauma can be related to the acid throwing phenomena uh, which is basically termed as vitriolage in a lot of persons so uh, all of these uh, infectious states these ulcerative phenomena uh, these traumatic causes and even the systemic diseases can sometimes manifest as the redness of eye in a particular patient. So what are the uh, different systemic illnesses if you are put on this question and you have to basically um, correlate the systemic diseases with the uh, red eye. It can be the hypertension first and foremostly. It can be a patient on uh, aspirin or, or, or on the prescription of aspirin or taking aspirin for a long term. Uh, then we have Georgian's syndrome, which can even manifest as a red eye in a, uh, in a person. Uh, so all of these manifestations are quite closely related to a red eye in a Patient. So one should know how to basically uh, distinguish or differentiate uh, these clinical features from one another and then finally move on or finally conclude towards a definitive diagnosis in a particular patient. Making a conclusive diagnosis is again very important because the treatment modalities would depend upon a final diagnosis in a particular patient. So uh, all of these, um, all of these um, differential diagnoses you should be well versed with and you should know uh, the terminologies that are related to it. Over here in this section, we are uh, just focusing on sclera. So sclera is basically one of the protective coverings of the eye, which is visible um, uh, in front or interiorly, uh, the whitish discoloration that is due to the sclera. Then we have a structure which is known as episclera. So uh, it is again the uh, transparent covering over the sclera, which is known as episclera. So infections can relate to the episclera as well as the sclera and obviously they are named uh, episcleritis and scleritis respectively uh, in this case. So over here in this section we'll be focusing on episcleritis and how to distinguish or differentiate it from scleritis and then we have the inflammatory changes that are quite particular uh, to the eye diseases. Uh, we can have keratitis, we can have uveitis, we can have blephritis. So all of these diseases uh, are relating or their names basically indicate the infections or the inflammations of these particular structures uh, in the eye. So we should know how to basically clinically distinguish all of these conditions. Uh, we should know, we should be well versed with the signs and symptomatologies in all of these cases and what are the treatment modalities um, again respectively uh, in all of these cases of of infections. So the episcleritis is a condition that is basically the inflammatory or the infectious condition that is associated with the episclera of the eye that is uh, transparent. It's not whitish discoloration. It's not of a whitish discoloration as in case of the sclera. It is the transparent coating over the sclera that is called as the episclera and any infections that are relating uh, to this episcleritis or this episcleral structure it is termed as episcleritis over here. You can see over here, this is the particular feature of episcleritis. We'd have the uh, reddish eye at a particular spot and sometimes quite uh, difficult to distinguish episcleritis from scleritis. There are these particular features, uh, it's quite acute in onset and when we discuss the scleritis, scleritis is quite subacute or chronic in onset and then it's again associated with the milder sort of pain and scleritis is associated with a lot of discomfort and with a lot of this uh, pain in the person. Uh, we'd see the irritation of the eyes are more serious in cases of scleritis. We'd have the tearing film that is more commonly observed in cases of scleritis. So these are the particular features of uh, that are uh, the distinguishing features of episcleritis from scleritis in this particular case. 
Episcleritis is usually superficial, it's usually idiopathic in nature, the, it is usually associated with co uh, collagen vascular diseases, for example rheumatoid arthritis. It is asymptomatic in a lot of cases and sometimes a milder pain is associated uh, with this sort of uh, episcleritis. It's a self-limiting disease. And the treatment that is usually associated with episcleritis is the topical treatment with antibiotics. On the other hand, we have scleritis. Sclera is the whitish, um, uh, whitish structure that is present or that is visible uh, in the interior aspect of the eye. It is a deep infection. It is a much more deeper infection than episcleritis. And on the other hand, it's idiopathic in nature as well. It is usually associated with a lot of collagen vascular diseases, for example, rheumatoid arthritis, SLE, Wegener's disease. Uh, then we have polyarthritis nodosa. So all of these diseases are the collagen vascular diseases. Herpes zoster and sarcoidosis are uh, the systemic uh, diseases which can manifest as the ocular manifestation of a scleritis in a patient. Uh, it is usually a dull, deep pain that wakes the patient up at night and the systemic treatment would include NSAIDs or prednisolone if the disease is severe enough. These are the particular features of scleritis. We have these um, hyperemia that is observed in the sclera. We have these vascular dilatations that are usually observed. We have a dilated pupil that is quite uh, visible in this picture. So this dilatation of the vessels and this hyperemia that is noted on the sclera, these are the particular clinical features that are associated with scleritis in a patient. The inflammatory changes, obviously, as we have already uh, noted down, this is basically a picture of herpes zoster. Uh, herpes zoster, this is the, uh, this is the uh, skin manifestations or the dermatological manifestations. And then we, we can also observe the ocular manifestations, that is the scleritis in this particular patient. So we can perform a lot of tests, for example, in geographies, just to rule out any other diseases. And all of these um, inflammatory changes changes can be observed in a patient of herpes zoster quite typically. Then we have uveitis on the other hand. You can see this hyperemia is quite common over here. The uveal apparatus is involved and the uh, infections and the inflammations of the uveal apparatus are quite uh, common in this particular patient of uveitis. We have the anterior uveitis that is basically acute, recurrent and chronic in nature. And on the other hand, we have the posterior uveitis, uh, which can be related to viritis. We have the retinal vasculitis, uh, retinitis and choroiditis. So all of these structures, uh, they can be associated. The infections of all of these structures can be associated with uveitis conclusively. So we have these two variants, that is the anterior and the posterior uh, or uveitis. The treatment modalities would be obviously the topical use of the antibiotics, the topical use of the steroid, uh, the steroidal uh, topical uh, drugs that are usually prescribed in a patient of uveitis. The prognosis is quite good and the outcomes are quite promising in, this, uh, in these cases of uveitis in a patient. Then we have pan-uveitis. Pan-uveitis is basically the involvement of the anterior and the posterior structures and it's basically the complete involvement of all the uveal apparatus. Uh, that is basically the anterior and the posterior uveitis collectively is known as pan-uveitis in a patient. Anterior uveitis is usually associated with photophobias. Uh, that is basically uh, the uh, the uh, uh, glare is present in the patient and he is basically intolerant uh, to light. So this is photosensitivity is basically known as photophobia in the patient. The red eye is a very common presenting complaint and then we have the decreased vision or the blurring of the vision uh, that is noted down in the patient.
the cause is usually idiopathic it's the commonest manifestation uh, you can see that there is a ciliary flush uh, that is noted down just right over here these these dilatation of the minute veins is known as the ciliary flush that is quite uh, commonly noted down then we have the posterior synche that is noted down over here the iris is also involved over here and over here we can see the kp spots so this these are the uh, these are quite evident on the slit lamp examination and you can see the fibrin deposits over here as well then we have the flare and the glare phenomena and then we have the hypopion hypopion is basically the accumulation of the exudates uh, due to this uveitis and this is basically you that due to the gravitational forces it is usually uh, located over here inferiorly located inferiorly so this is the uh, this is due to the fact that the gravitational forces are acting on the exudates then we have the systemic diseases that are usually manifesting as red eye disease in a patient associated to systemic diseases we have the seronegative arthropathies um, then we have the ibides that is the inflammatory bowel diseases we have the psoriatic arthritis we have the reiter's disease on the one hand we have the autoimmune disorders for example sarcoidosis bashit's disease and infections are mostly related with shingles and toxoplasmosis as well so shingles is basically herpes zoster that usually manifest as ocular manifestations of uh, these corneal serrations in a patient we have toxoplasmosis which have again corneal uh, manifestations of this redness of the eye in the patient so these infectious states that can be viral as well bacterial as well as fungal so the infections can be of these three variants at one hand then we have the autoimmune disorders and on the other hand we have the arthropathies uh, that have their ocular manifestations over here uh, as the redness of the eye in the patient we have tuberculosis which can manifest as a red eye in a patient and then finally we have syphilis that can manifest as a red eye even the hiv patients that is the hum human immune deficiency virus uh, patients having this human immune deficiency virus can manifest as a red eye in a person so over here in this section basically we summarize the different other infections ranging from episcleritis scleritis and uveitis and how can we distinguish all of these infections from the other previous infections that were basically conjunctivitis and blepharitis and even the systemic diseases can manifest as ocular manifestations of a red eye in a patient so one should know how to get to a conclusive diagnosis uh, in a patient even uh, through the history along with the clinical examination is helpful and sometimes the further investigations are needed in a particular patient so i uh, so that is the end of the section thank you for watching scaria.com